Hi, Bob Summers here again, and today we're looking at video two on a four video series on how to get reviews using the five star review system on bestlocalreviews.com. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about how to send a review request. And as important as it is, which we talked about in video one, to ask a patient to write a review, the reality is how and when you send the review request will have more to do with respect to a patient writing a review than even asking them does. It's that important. And there is one huge rule of thumb and I want to give it to you in the form of a warning and here it is. Warning! You must send the review request to your patient before they leave your office and while they're in your presence. Now here's what I can tell you. If a dentist or a hygienist asks a patient to write a review and the patient leaves, they've only been gone three minutes, they've walked out of the office, if you send a review request to them after they walk out of your office, they will not write a review. I don't understand it, but it's human nature, they won't do it. If the patient is standing in front of you and their back is turned to you because they're talking to another patient and you send the review request and they're not engaged with you when you do it, they will not write a review. The only way you're going to get the highest percentage of people to write a review is to engage with them so that they know exactly what you're doing. And I'm going to show you what that is in a moment. It's as simple as typing in their name and email and sending it to them. But here's the bottom line. If you are noticing that nobody is writing a review for you, I can almost guarantee you it's because this is missing. You're not sending the review request to them while they are standing in your presence. All right, now that you know how critically important that is, let's go ahead and take a look at how do you send a review request. So the first thing I want you to do is go to bestlocalreviews.com and sign into the system, log in. I'm already logged in. So when you click on the login button, you'll type in the username and password that, uh, that you have to get into the system. Once you've done that, you're going to click on request new review. It's always in the top right. Now here's what we're going to do while the patient is with us. We're going to type in their first name with a capital letter. This is the protocol for it. I also notice a lot of dentists use all caps. You don't want to do that because it will look ridiculous in the email. You're going to put in their last name and then you're going to ask them for their primary email address. Now the reason you're asking for their primary email address is because you want to make sure you get the email that they're always looking at. Now, you always, here's the rule of thumb, even though you can send someone an email or a text message, you always want to get their email. So at the end of this program, I'm going to test you and the test is going to be, do you always send an email or do you always send a text? The answer is you always send an email. Now I want to show you why. There are four reasons why you always want to send the request by email. Now you can send it by text too, but you're always going to send it by email. Here's the first reason. One third of your patients would rather write a review from a desktop or a laptop computer. If you don't send them an email, you are taking the opportunity for them to use a keyboard to write the review away from them. So literally one third of them would rather write it on a desktop. That's the first reason you always want to get their email. Here's the second reason. If your patient doesn't respond to your request after three days, they're going to get what we call an off-the-hook reminder, which is only sent to them if you get their email. Now here's what I mean by that. If you ask a patient to write a review and you send a request to them, and you send it by email, if they don't respond after three days, they're going to get an email that reads like this. And by the way, when I read this to you, I want you to know that this reminder, which will go out automatically only if you put their email in, literally will be responsible for half of all the reviews you get. And here's how it reads. Hi Julie, if you haven't had a chance to review us yet, please don't worry about it. My only concern in asking you to write a review is to make sure that you were delighted with the quality of our service and to let you know how much we appreciate you and your trust in our care. Now that is an awesome, what we call off the hook email reminder. And even though it says, hey, don't worry about writing a review, what happens is a ton of your patients, when they get that by email, they're already at their computer, they're going to sit down and they're going to go write you a review on Google or Yelp or wherever. Now, if you don't send it by email, we're not going to send the, the off the hook review reminder by text. It only will be sent if you send an email. Here's the third reason. Uh, the coupon and flyer feature is only sent when you send an email. Now maybe you've not seen the coupon or flyer yet, so let me show you what it looks like. 
Let's go on over there. And here's an example of what it looks like. So after a customer writes a review, if you want, you can send them this little flyer uh, that says, hey, you know, here's the doctor that served us. Please refer to this uh, uh, um, flyer or coupon when you call or, or schedule your first appointment. They can share it on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. It is an awesome, awesome referral tool, but it is only going to go to your patients if you send them an email. We are not going to send a coupon or a flyer by text. We're not going to do it. And the third thing that the system allows you to do, if you send an email, oftentimes emails will get through quickly when a text is slow. So if you send someone a text, sometimes if their bars are low or if they're using, you know, Sprint or Verizon or something that generally holds their text for a few minutes or an hour even, the email may very well get through if the people that want the request sent by text get an email and a text. So these are the four reasons you always, always, always want to get their email address. Now, after you get their email address, you can ask your patient, would you like me to send this to you by text? Now notice this is not an either or question. I didn't say would you rather we send it by text. I'm giving you the choice of would you like me to send it by text too. And the reason for that of course is if you only send it by text, there's no reminder that goes out, there's no coupon or flyer, you're missing on a ton of features. So after you get their email and you confirm it, remember their primary email address, you would say, hey, would you like me to text this to you? Now, what you're probably going to find is that about half of your patients say, sure, text it to me, and the other half are going to say, no, no, email is fine. So for the ones that say text, type in their text number. Now, the next thing is where it says linked to employ. Depending on what system you have, when you click on the link, you'll have multiple choices down here. Now, for the Dental Associates of Northern uh, Virginia, they have the default one coming from the Dental Associates of Northern Virginia team. But you generally almost always want to select which dentist uh, was the one that served that patient. So if it's Dr. Julia that served that patient, you would select Julia. If it was Dr. Marty, you would select Dr. Marty when you send the review request. And there's lots of reasons you're going to want to do that, so you're going to want to make sure which dentist served that particular patient. Now if you don't know, you'll just leave it set for the default. And finally, this is the coupon flyer feature. Now I showed you the flyer that we have set up for you guys, and you can look and see what your own flyer is, but here's what you need to do after you get their name and email and possibly their text message right before you send it I strongly encourage you to say something like this hey Bob if it's okay I'd like to send along a little flyer about our practice and ask if it's okay uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing it with your family and friends is that alright now you're gonna find every one of your patients is gonna say sure send it to me and I strongly encourage you to ask before you send it for two reasons if you don't ask them if it's okay, it could be perceived as spam as unwanted email. Also, when you ask them if it's okay to send it and they say yes, they are way more likely to share that coupon with their family and friends. Now, when the highly unlikely event they say, no, do not send me that flyer, if you click on this, you can go to the drop-down menu and you can select the default thank you message. Now, I would never select that personally because what that really means is no flyer is going to be sent. So you always want to send the flyer and I always encourage you to ask, hey, Bob, if it's okay, I'd like to send along our flyer about our practice and ask if you wouldn't mind sharing it with your family and friends. May I do that? And as soon as they say yes, all you have to do is click on submit request. Once you've done that, that email and our text is sent off. Now, here's the test question, remember? The test question was, do you always send it by email or do you always send it by text? And the answer is, you always send it by email. Now, the only exception is, if someone doesn't have an email and all they have is a phone, then, of course, you can send it right to their phone. The other thing, which is probably the single most important thing I want you to get out of this video, is this. You absolutely have to fill out this little form while you are literally in the presence of your patient because if they are not with you while you are doing this they will not respond and quite frankly I don't fully understand the reason for it I think it may have something to do with when they know you've sent it and they know you know that you've sent it they are just way more likely to follow through and, uh, and, and, and actually write a review now in the next video we're going to talk about how the system works and I'm going to show you step by step what your patients see when they get the 
review requests and what all their choices are and how it's so darn easy for them to write a review on sites like Google and Yelp and possibly a testimonial. Okay, so that is how you send a review request.